All right, great. Preview. Hey, there it is, picture in a picture. Great. So today we're going to talk about using curves throughout the surfaces and on using your record history to make really informed choices and in making changes uh, so you can visualize them three dimensionally, not just two dimensionally. Before I jump into surfaces, sweep one rail, I want to talk about some similarities between lofting and revolving. Let's see. I've got kind of a, we'll call it an ugly little circle. It'll give our surface a little character. All right. So it'll have a little funky look to it, but it's Tuesday. It's good for funky looks. So if I do a straight revolve, remember last time, anytime you use the revolve command, it's kind of like a merry-go-round. The center has to be the center, and it's always circular, full circle. Let's get a little shaded view going on here. So it doesn't quite match my bottom profile because it has to be circular. That's part of being revolve. If you want to add that extra little level of dimension to it, the edge of desnudos because we talked about it last class. There we go. Our inside, our outside, and our naked edge. So that's not exactly what I wanted. Rare revolve gives us the ability to change the rail. So instead of circular, it can be any closed curve. The reason I say closed curve because I'm selecting full circle, which means it has to go all the way back to where it started. So let's do a little rail revolve. Profile is this curve. Rail curve, still a similar axis, but this time, let's see if I got that back. Profile curve, rail curve, axis. There we go. So you see how this one's like it adheres what I put down first? So it gives you a bit more control. It'll have more data, which can be good and bad. Bad if you're trying to keep it simple, but good if you need that detail. So a quick little uh, augmentation on that. So that's your revolve. You might be thinking, what can a loft do? I'm fixing to do some dark magic on this. Save myself a little bit of time. And this gets into like some of my favorite commands that I can use with Rhinoceros. I want some curves from this surface, and I don't want to like draw them manually. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to project the straight lines through that surface. That's okay. I don't mind it breaks my history. We'll leverage it later, and I'll go ahead and get rid of that. So instead of me drawing these lines, you see how it saved me some, some time just to have it create it for me? Granted, that's the center point. That's going to have a little bit of a weird interaction. Just for time's sake, I'm going to delete part of this. So that way it doesn't become like just bad geometry. I'm going to split these guys, enter with that circle. Did I get anything? No, because they didn't intersect. Okay. There are more than one ways to do things in Rhinoceros. There we go. Now I have a surface intersecting, and I know they intersect because I can see them intersecting. Objects to split the lines that I threw through that old surface. What am I splitting with or cutting with? There we go. So if I did that rail revolve, it looked very similar to what I had earlier. Surface, rail revolve. Profile curve, we'll pick you. Rail curve, you. I've got two sitting on top of each other. I really should delete one. Axis, give me a different view. It's hard to select my axis. We'll say it's right here. All right, looks similar, right? Let's. The downside to this is like all the walls are pretty consistent, right? I don't have the detail that I had earlier, partly because I don't have that initial profile curve. But Revolve is good. It has a function, but Loft can actually get you one more step. So let's say I want a detail. Let me see. How many control points do I have over this? Rebuild. 20. 10 is fine. Actually, everybody. Rebuild them as 10. All right. I'm not going to change my geometry hardly at all. A benefit of using Loft 
is I can start adding additional detail. So let's pull some of these control points in, some of these control points out. And just to make it really funky, you're out and you're out. So we can't do this revolve. It doesn't really, it doesn't fit a circular pattern. On the bottom it does, but I think it's really weird towards the middle section. It's kind of like a, an odd cactus. This is where loft is deceptively um, useful. Because if I loft from one, two, three, four, that surface is going to sweep around. There we go. So you see how it's swept around right now? Let me go to more of a normal or tight. That way you can see exactly what I'm doing here. So it is, it's a bit like Revolve. I mean, the surface did sweep around, but I was able to add a lot of detail by going back and messing with those, those control points on those curves. So it's a simple operation done in a more complex way. So loft can be as simple as, you know, circle to, we'll do a square like we did last time. Lofting from you to you. Where's my seam start? So if you were going to sew that piece of fabric together, where would it be? So a loft can be as simple as that, and you can chain as many lofts together as you want to. Or it can be done in a little bit of a revolve way. So it's deceitfully very useful. So we talked about surfacing from one curve. I'm going to review that just briefly. Just looking how the geometry changes. I'm going to copy paste you. And then let's see, is this going the direction that I'd like it to go? Sure. One, two, and a little bitty curve up. Ooh, that's not going the direction I want to. Undo, undo. There we go. There we go. One, two, curve up just a little bit. Man, not quite what I wanted. You see, I'm kind of like rotating around. I want to be here, but right now it's rotating around my origin, my zero, zero point. If you click on the object you want to focus on, and these look like uh, like Cheetos puffballs. If you do <laughs> zoom to Cheeto puffballs, it recenters your camera on that object. Very simple, very helpful. I'm going to rotate using the old school because I want to work it on that point. There we go. And... I can move it, but I want a copy. So I'll do a copy this time, copy from that point to that point. And now we can talk about that example I wanted to. So a strew curve along a curve is simpler to sweep one rail, but it lacks some geometry, right? I want to extrude that curve, enter along that rail. And so it always keeps straight, 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 all the way through. Whereas sweep one rail, more complex command gives you more data. So What's my rail? What's my cross section curve? You see how this starts to curve in? I made it run into itself, but it starts to spin inwards. I'm going to have to do this again to make. It's okay. All right, one more time. Extrude curve along curve, this curve, enter that path. So it keeps straight, as you can see by that ISO curve. And then the sweep one rail. This is my rail. You see how I drew them backwards? And that's my cross section. So as this curve turns, the input profile will also turn. Little detail. It's a subtle detail, but incredibly powerful. And it's kind of embedded within the wording. Let me do, drawing a perspective is typically bad, but I'm doing here for uh, a bit of speed. Let's see, why is it snapping? Here we go, grid snap, I don't want it, I don't really need it in this situation. I'm going to copy you from point to point and then use old school rotate. I want you to rotate here. All right, same command. I'll show you what the little secret is. Sweep one rail. What's my rail? This one. Now, top left, select cross-section curves. I don't just have to have one. 
I can run as many different inputs or profiles along that rail that I want to. So one, two, three, four. Once again, it's a, it's a small fluctuation just like with the loft. It can make a big amount of difference in your models. I don't want to show you this next one. So how can we use history to influence? I like to always have my record history on. I don't mind saying your broke history. That's fine. I'd rather have it on and need it than have it off and not have it because I have to go back and repeat the command. So even though I'm always kind of hitting did it break history? Yes. I kind of think it's an okay thing. So let's see. This is built with record history. We'll get rid of you. So if I want to, since that's part of the input, if I want to change this curve, let me go on top, it updates the, the output. Change the input, update the output. And this can be so nice if you're just looking for different types of forms, trying to understand a surface, that instead of having to redo the command and redo the command, if I have control history and I have an acceptable amount of points that I can augment, you can develop things quickly and get them where you want to be. Now it's not SOLIDWORKS precise, but think of Rhino as more of a sketching tool that can be refined and SOLIDWORKS is more of a, once you have your design and you're completing it. So the different purposes for different types of CAD software. Let me add one more little bonus onto this. I'm gonna pull out a sphere just so I can show you can do something super curvy. I wanna get rid of that extra input. I want a domed star up top. Mm, star's not complex. We've already done a star. Let's do something a little bit more creative. I'm going to get a letter out. Where's the letter T? There we go. Give me the letter B. I want it in curves. So you want surfaces are solid, so you'll get the option of thicknesses, but really I just want the curve. I'm going to mess with that just a little bit. My starting input is one height, but I can scale it if I don't want it. Right, too small. I think that's faster than kind of guessing at an input. Let me see what type of control points we have here. Mm, a bit more than I wanted. We'll use the outside of my B, and then I'll rebuild it. <laughs> that's kind of ugly. I kind of like it. So I have this input curve, and what I want to do, I want to throw this curve onto this surface. So we're going to use the project command. So pullback pulls this like towards the center of the sphere, whereas project works just like this. It's extruding into the surface, and where the two surfaces connect, that'll make a curve for you. That's essentially what the project tool does. So curve, curve from objects. We haven't got the duplicate edge, still one of my favorite. Intersection, still one of my favorite. But right now, we're working on project. So... Be in the viewport that um, is appropriate. I'll do it wrong, and then I'll come back and do it right. If I want to project that curve, enter, onto that surface, nothing's going to happen. The reason why project works just like, um, we'll call it a laser, it's going to go straight through the computer. So when you use it, it goes all the way. So that one makes sense using the top view because it actually travels through that surface. So in that case, project works great. But if I try to do a, a projection or make this go like a laser all the way through the computer, you can see this doesn't hit anything. There's nothing for that surface or that curve to contact with. So it's important when you're using project, make sure you're using the right viewport where your curve can actually travel through whatever object you want it to interact with. Curve, curve from objects, project, that curve, enter, do that surface. So, I mean, this could be good. I'm like, oh, that's perfect. I love it. I'm going to split that surface with that curve. Right? And then I have my own little domed letter. But let's say I didn't love it as much. And I wanted to make a small change. This is the beauty of record history. Record history is on. 
I can go back to my input curve, turn on my control points, and as I move that control point, it updates on the surface that I'm intending to work on. So I can sharpen up my letters a little bit. I make it a B a bit more verbose. I don't know what verbose means, but it sounds nice. Right, so now this looks better. Trust me, this, my 10 or so control points, is so much easier to work on than this curve, which is a lot more control points. So you're using your simple input through record history to do a lot of complex work. Let's finish that one up. Split that one with that one. Delete. And I want to add a thickness to this because I want to 3D print it right away. So surface. I can either extrude the surface, I can have a straight, that's a curve, sorry, solid from surfaces, extrude surface straight, right. equal thickness, that's extruding it vertically, the difference between that and offset, offset keeps in mind the direction the surface is going into, so you see these arrows, they're all going away from the center. You can flip them around and have them inset if you want. Distance of one. So see the difference in that? Perfect. 3D print that. So I definitely suggest using simple curves projected on a surface. Mess with the curve. That way it looks great on your 3D object. And then you can split and extrude and do what you want with that. Let's see. Let's go into sweep to rail. I share with you a video I found on YouTube. It's it's a subtle change, but it has a it affects a lot on like the geometry. The geometry, of course. We'll let you run through that a little bit. But old professor and friend of mine from SCAD, PJ Chen, does a really good job of like analyzing the subtle differences between the commands and all the different options. So just in terms of like textbook, it'll show you the good and bad iterations of how you can sweep to rail. So I'm going to work through a bit of an example. If you know me, you know I love shoes. So we're going to make a quick shoe and then we'll come back and use the project tool again to our distinct advantage. So top, we need the bottom portion of a shoe. I like square-ish toes. Do I want to do a left shoe or a right shoe? Let me think real fast. Let's do the other one. What do I want my seam? Like you've got to start the curve somewhere, just like a circle. We'll start on the heel, come back in for the insole. Not perfect. That's okay. That's why we have control points. Let's get rid of one of you, add a little more roundness to the back. And we got to build a better toe box. It looks very vanilla. I mean, it's a very comprehensive shoe. How do I make this more athletic, right? So my big toe would be here. We can flare this out for a little bit more support. If I do need a bit more information, it's like, I want to have this toe be more narrow, make it more athletic working, looking. One option, if I need to add a point, right, I can rebuild. Rebuild this, it has 12, give me 13. The downside is I didn't get to choose where the extra point was. So put it here, made it look kind of frumpy. Another way I could do it is insert control point. I know you're around here somewhere. Here we go. Insert control point. And this time I get to specify where on this line I get to insert a control point. Now, it did make it look bad, but at least I know it's in this area. Let's make that change. We're starting to look more athletic. I'm like, dress you, bring that back. Spend a lot of time trying to get the front of the shoe to look correct. There's one more way you can augment the amount of pull you have on a point. It's entering the weight. We talked about on the first or second day of class how these points act a lot like gravitational control. Am I still recording? 
Am I doing a good job? Thanks. The last one is to edit the weight of the control point. So increase its gravitational pull. So edit weight, and I can whoop, pull it to that point. Or I can make it more lazy, where it's like has barely any gravitational pull. There. More like a CrossFit shoe. But this will suffice. So this will be the sole of my shoe. And then I need another profile. Keep in mind, we're doing sweep two rail. So. Mm. Just as I started doing this, I started reprimanding myself in my head, like, you know what? This is not actually how your shoe would work. If you look down at your shoe, it's not flat, is it? It actually has a little bit of a arch. If you were to wear these clogs, it'd probably damage your feet. That would be like super uncomfortable. Ladies, heels, you hear me? I'll get rid of one of you guys. I can still use this, but I'm, I'm noticing a distinct, like, shoes don't work like this. Let's point that just a little bit and we shouldn't be that tall all right now we're starting to resemble more athletic more of an athletic stance bring you back just a little bit bring you back to hmm, slipper action comfortable performance one-on-one -on -one. all right so the top of this is fine but as I look at the bottom of this like we know that's not how a shoe actually looks we can use a command we used week ago curve from two views so if you look at your shoe it has it kind of raises up in the toe comes down to where like the balls of your feet are the forefoot raises up for your arch comes back down for your heel and we'll make this pretty close so look in this perspective this is a side view top view this is one curve that's one curve so we have just enough we can do curve from two views now you got to click on the way uh, the curves look if they look correct use that viewport if they don't like I'm not going to do front view and a flat view because I don't want that as an input so my first curve will be my top view that's good my second view my front view because in both of those curves it looks good look at that Look at the complexity that I got to skip just from using a smart command. Use that all the time. Save yourself from frustration and headaches. Do I need to change it? Right. Let me make sure of something. Let's say that my arch is a little bit too far forwards. I'm going to use this. Control points back on for you. Mm -mm. I don't want to work in the more... Uh, difficult part. I'm going to work on the simple part. Nice. So one, two, three. If I scoot those back, that's the beauty of record history. It saves you so much work. All right. Super arch support. I'd rather have a dramatic shoe than a not dramatic shoe. All right. Delete. We're not going to mess with it. We're done with record history. What I should do. I don't need it now, but I might need it. I don't want to throw a week work that I've done. So two options. Copy paste, and I'll move it down the line. If I need it again, I don't have to start it over from scratch. Or the second option, the hide button. Where's my little light bulb? So think about like the upside down in Stranger Things. If you ever watched it, watch it. Great television show. But it's on the opposite side of the world on Rhino. It's still in here, but it's in another dimension. If you want to go get things back from that dimension, you show, show objects. Hey, then it came back. But right now, we'll throw it into the void. Now we need to reattach the tops of my shoe, well, the front and back profile, to my newly beautiful shoe. It's beautiful, but too many control points, right? Escape, rebuild, that curve. 70 control points. Let's see. I've lost too much detail there. How about 20? Preview. That's much better. right? I do lose some deviation, but overall, it's much more simple and be easy to model with. The second thing, we're at like a, a bit of a conflict because in terms of a shoe, I know that this opening here for my ankle, let go in here. 
let's see, alt, there we go. Right, so it should come to about that point. Oh no, you see what I have in my, my lips? It looks good from this view. Second day of class. You get a curve that's gone kind of wonky, but it looks good in one view. Transform. Project a seaplane, smashes it straight down, right? Delete input objects? Yes, because it was ugly. And now all I must do is go back and move it to the appropriate height. Speaking of move, we'll do the same thing here. I want to move the front of my toe to the back of my heel. Let's look at this from the top view. This one's pretty straightforward, right? It needs to, this edge needs to contact with the back, but this one's a little bit off. I do want to start here, like that's kind of the midline of your foot. Your foot isn't a straight object, it has a little bit of curve to it. So we're going to have to do a little bit of control point work. That's good. Control points on. That's contacted there. This one should go quad, because that means it's the front edge. This should also go to the back quad. There we go. Do I still like the way the profile looks? Side view. I want that to sink just a touch. There we go. The closer points are together. There we go. The closer they are together, the more of a tight curve you get. The further points are away from one another, the more loose curve you get. If you ever wonder how to make a right turn or a, it's a loose right angle, one, two, three, and then you can actually turn the corner. Because if you do one, two, it'll round off for you. Fun fact. So I believe the back looks pretty good, right? It's right down the back midline. But the front is a little bit wonky. I'm going to use these control points and move them over where this is more of a consistent line. It doesn't have to be perfect, but I want it to be more natural. A little adjustment here. Good. So now we have two methods we could use. And just to let you know, we're going to have some bunching here because we're going to have a lot of geometry from the bottom flowing up into the top. So there's two options. Either I can do sweep to rail with closed curves, rail one, rail two, or I can do sweep to rail with open curves. We'll do both and we'll take our best option. Copy, paste, move, solid, sorry, surface, sweep to rails. We'll do it with our closed curves, closed curve, cross section, cross section. It's pretty good. Because I wanted to finish, I'm going to click on closed sweep. All right. So that was using the closed curves as input sweeps. We would do the same thing sweep to rail, open curve, open curve, cross section, cross section. This is where the seam goes. I think this is a bad place for a seam. I want to move that seam all the way to the back. It's simpler geometry, a lot cleaner. Plus, when you're looking at shoes, you typically look at the front, not the back. So I'm going to hide that seam back there. All right. Like Honestly, there's like aspects of both shoes that I think are admirable. That one's a bit too thick. <laughs> that one holds a bit better line. The challenges on the open curve will be this part needs some refinement and this needs to be pulled out. It just seems like this upper part needs some more width. So like I said earlier, you have the ability to add more cross section curves. I'll give us two options. You got to bear in mind, how did you construct it? I did this one from, from curves, right? I did this from closed curves. We'll do it first. So instead of drawing from scratch, I'll throw down a line, get this shaded for y'all. I'm going to project curve, curve from objects, project that curve into that shoe. Right? 
And I can move this up and down and see over here that it's updating. All right, we'll say that's good. That's okay. And for the second shoe, I'm going to go from the top. I'll give myself a couple of inputs here to the sides. And I will do curve, curve from objects, project this curve, this curve, this one, and this one through my surface. How they hit? Pretty good. Keep in mind, I don't have to keep these, but they're really good starting points. They keep me from having to do lots of hard work. Okay, I'll delete the surface because we got to rebuild. We're adding more information or geometry into the system. Let me see. Do I want to rebuild this? Man, 189. It's crazy, especially with the deviation that didn't change that much. Go from top view. I've already got a feeling that I'm going to want to go. With my second option, but I want to play this out just a little bit, a little bit longer. Pull this in a bit tighter. I do want it to flare out, but I don't want it to be a clown shoe. These need to stay closer in here. Keep in mind, if you don't want a control point, you want to simplify it. You can just delete the control point. Deleting inputs that I don't think I need. Okay, I need those. Undo, undo. All right, let's see what we got. So going back in that same process we talked about earlier. Ugh, I've kind of I've destroyed my original intent. I'm gonna scale one dimension. That's one option. Or transform, scale, one dimension. Start point, holding shift, and then end point. I feel like I just caused a conflict for myself. Let's see. Sweep to rail, right? So we did closed curves, right? Open, sorry, closed curve, closed curve, open, open, close sweep. That gave me this. All right, so I can't add that one here. It doesn't work. So I've got to flip these around. So we're going to redo the process where I'm going to use my surface sweep to rail. Open curve, open curve, enter, sorry, repeat, open curve, open curve. I can choose many cross-section profiles as I want. One, two, three. I want that seam in the back. Mm. It does need some refinement. There's parts that are looking good. Definitely need to work on this kind of forefoot, right? Because this is based off of these simple curves, I can go back in these curves and make those small adjustments without really having to do all that much work. That's not bad. We'll leave you there for a second. Let's try our second methodology. Sweep to rail, closed and closed. And then we'll do cross-section curves. Wait, did we simplify these things? I know that we didn't. Let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to rebuild. Actually, you know how to rebuild already? Here's another option. If you don't need to adhere to a certain tolerance, you can just use interpolate points, and wherever you click, the line will go. Right? So I have near on one, two, three, four, five, and six. Delete the old one. One, two, three, four, five, and six. Delete the old one. 
these. I just want to know the numbers I'm working with. 64 control points. There's no way I want to make a modification with 64 control points. So another option. One, two, three, four. We're going to need some more points towards the bottom because it's a tighter curve. That's what I thought. More simplified version. And this last one. One, two, three, four. I need more points in here to make this curve. And I'm going to short it just a little bit. All right. We simplified our curve, therefore, we have simplified our surfaces. Sweep to rail, where closed and closed. Cross section, pick them in order. So you either go clockwise or counterclockwise. I forgot one command on that one, didn't I? Can you tell me what it was? You're fixing to see once I get to that last command. Close sweep. All right, so now it's all the way around. If you watch the video, maintain height can have its benefits. I click it more of a tester. Sometimes it works good, sometimes it doesn't. So the change I need to make on this shoe is more towards the inside. I'm going to delete that surface. Go through it one more time. I'm going to see if we can auto select. One, two, all the rest of them. Can you line it up? You can. Close sweep. That's good. All right, so when we're off the second shoot, it's a bit closer to my intent. Told you that we might we have a lot of geometry going to a small space. So I'm going to turn my control points on so you can see what's going on. They all fold towards the interior. Yeah? So the project curve that we had earlier on can come back and benefit us here. Not you. We decided this is not really the way I want to go. We're going to get cut out from my laces. Holding Alt, that way I disable. What did I disable? My near command for overriding me. There we go. I don't know if this is right, and that's okay. That's the beauty of the projection command. Convert, sorry, person objects, project, this curve, enter to that surface. How does it look? It's not bad. I do want to flare out the top just a bit more, maybe pinch that in. Where is my input curve? Not really good space for it. All right. Control points on. And you can see as I pull that in, it updates. As I pull that out, it updates too far. Let's open the front some more. You can move points. You can also scale points, right? So undo, redo. I'm all right with that. So we're going to do a split. Split works because this curve intersects or bisects this surface perfectly. If it didn't, kind of a backup way to do it is take your surface, take your curve, extrude it through. I'm wondering how I'm doing that. Gumball trick. Start dragging and then hold control. Allows you to do extrusion. That's one way to split. Or because I know that curve perfectly bisects, I'll split this shoe with that curve. There we go. One more detail on this shoe before we go. Mm. I might, I should have simplified that up a little bit. Do I still have that option? I think dragging it broke the history. Yeah, dragging it broke the history, so I'd have to rebuild it. I'll leave it because it's not really going to add anything to the lesson you don't already know. But if I want to add 
an exterior detail, kind of like a heel cap perhaps. Same approach. I'm going to hold Alt to disable my near. Oh man, so saucy. Pull that out just a touch. Good. All right. Because it's kind of hard to edit that within the surface, I'll move it over. What view does it look good in my front view? Curve. Curve from object. Project through that surface. Let's go see what it looks like. All right. That's what I was most concerned about, that part right there. But we'll make it thinner. I move this towards the back. All right. I'm good with that. So instead of detaching it, let's say I want to keep like this inner shoe just like I, as it is. Copy paste. I'll move it back. That way I can work on the shoe cap and when it's ready, I'll slide it back into place. So split this shoe with that input. Oh no. You see right here, our seam. Our seam is going to make it a little bit more difficult because that's the surface, that's the surface. While it can be done, it's not as like good craftsmanship. So before I did, before I split it, there's one more command. When you're working with any surface, there's always a seam. If you want to move it, it's called surf seam. So surf, surf seam. And I'll select this surface and it says, hey, where do you want to move that seam? I'll just move it out of the way. And you can do that anytime this is a consistent surface. When you have a poly surface, you can't get it. But now watch what happens. I'm going to split the shoe with my curve. Look at the difference. One surface, a lot cleaner. All right, we're going to do a offset surface, offset surface to the outside. So flip all. How about point two? Not enough. Repeat. Flip all. 0.5. Also, I want to make it a solid. Yes. There we go. So now I got a shoe cap just for my own enjoyment. Layers tool. It was like a cake. Move to layer. And this way, when I'm ready, I can just slide it back to my original shoe. So a bit of a combination of sweep to rail and taking curves, projecting, and then splitting that projection to get your own kind of custom cutout area. I think that's about it.